Today on Ortho 2, we are going to be talking about Quetzalcoatlus. Quetzalcoatlus was the largest known animal to ever take flight. It was about the size of a giraffe and had the wingspan the size of a small plane. Before we talk about how amazing this animal was, let's talk about its origins. Quetzalcoatlus was a pterosaur. Pterosaurs are often called pterodactyls in pop culture. But pterodactyls are just one genus of pterosaur. Pterosaurs are also not dinosaurs. Most people assume any animal from the Mesozoic is a dinosaur, but in reality there are a lot of other reptilian groups that were not dinosaurs. Pterosaurs appeared 228 million years ago in the late Triassic. It is somewhat unclear what group these animals evolved from. We do not have multiple transitional species as of now, but we are still able to see how more primitive pterosaurs evolved into more advanced species. The first pterosaurs had long tails and relatively inefficient wings. These animals were the first vertebrates to take to the skies. The only other animals to fly before them were insects. Pterosaurs would evolve to have short tails and very efficient wings. Unlike modern birds who have to run and flap their wings to take off, pterosaurs could launch themselves into the air in a single movement and take flight. Or I shouldn't say single movement, but a few movements. Since they are capable of taking off in this way, they are able to grow very large and still be able to fly. The group known as the Asdarkids were able to take these size limits to the extremes. Not all Asdarkids were giants, but many of them were. Species like Aerotitan, Volgo Draco, and of course Quetzalcoatlus were all giant. Quetzalcoatlus in particular is the largest known animal to be able to fly. It had an incredible wingspan of 36 feet. Larger estimates claim a wingspan above 40 feet, and that is certainly possible. Based on its wingspan, it would have been 10 feet at the shoulder and 18 feet tall at the tip of the head. That means it would have been taller than most giraffes. The weight is even more of a mystery than the wingspan, but it, the common consensus is that it weighed 450 to 550 pounds. Of course, individuals could have weighed more or less than that range. So what did this animal eat? There are a few main hypotheses in regards to how they fed. Scavenging, hunting in the water, and hunting on land have all been proposed. Scavenging was ruled out because when the jaws shut, the tips of the beak did not meet. This means it would be very difficult for the animal to pull meat off of a carcass. Hunting in the water was an originally accepted idea, though after studies it seems to be very unlikely. For a flying animal as big as Quetzalcoatlus, it would not have been able to dive into the water, so it would likely had to skim the water to feed. Skimming is a feeding technique seen in many modern day bird species. It entails flying very close to the water's surface so a beak can be used to catch fish. Quetzalcoatlus was too big and not adapted to this lifestyle. If it tried to dip its beak into the water, it would there would be way too much drag and it would likely crash. Since scavenging and skimming can be crossed out, that means hunting on land is the most likely feeding technique. They were terrestrial stalkers like modern day storks. They would use their massive heads and powerful necks to skewer prey. Small dinosaurs and other vertebrates would have been a common meal for this beast. Imagine how frightening it would be if this animal still existed. A giraffe-sized stork with the wingspan of a small plane planning to skewer you. It must have been a deadly hunter. Since this animal had such a massive wingspan, it was able to soar for many miles. It is thought that it could go up to 80 miles per hour and travel over 9,000 miles. That is an impressive feat for modern day planes. Another cool thing about these animals is that they actually had hair-like fibers called pycno fibers. Pycno fibers were a dense hair-like structure seen in pterosaurs. The presence of these pycno fibers lead us to believe that they are warm-blooded. Even though they are considered to be hair, they are more closely related to feathers. They provided no aid in flight, but they were hollow tubes like many primitive feathers. Though they were able to fly, they were still prey for some animals. There is no evidence of this particular species being preyed upon, but other pterosaurs were consumed by terrestrial as well as marine predators. Quetzalcoatlus existed at the very end of the Cretaceous. Of course, this means that it went extinct due to the KPG mass extinction. Pterosaurs were becoming more and more diverse as the Cretaceous progressed, and it is likely that we would have seen more and more unique pterosaurs. Quetzalcoatlus represents just one very unique species of the countless species of pterosaur. Unfortunately though, it was lost at the end of the Cretaceous, and an animal that size has never been seen again. But there has been other animals that take flight such as birds that were actually very massive. Maybe a possible future video. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys like learning about this amazing animal. 
leave a comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Also, I made a bunch of other ancient animal videos just like this one if you want to check them out. I'll see you in the next episode of Ortho 2. See ya.